our fourth strategy focuses on building community. And it's important to recognize that faculty teaching online must enact strategies to build community with and among students. So earlier Luke talked about mandatory interaction. So mandatory interaction is not only a way to be intrusive, but also as a way to build community in your online, with your online learners in this new um, context in which we find ourselves. And in doing so, it's important for faculty to model the type of engagement that they expect to see from students. So we talked about doing the videos, anything that you're asking students to do um, it, with regard to engagement and participation, you should also be doing the same thing and modeling um, what you expect from students. And that even also involves being active in class discussion boards, group chats, forums, and so forth. And having a set of community norms that are established at the beginning of the course and agreed upon by both students and faculty is also an important way to build and sustain community. And we would say that at a minimum, your community norms should establish expectations, expectations for communication in terms of how we're going to communicate and how often, expectations for how we're going to give and share critical feedback with each other, uh, what type of language is appropriate within our learning community, um, how we're going to share and exchange perspectives and so forth. And we also think it's helpful um, that if, if you have the opportunity for, for everyone in the course to see each other doing synchronous class session, that that also really goes a long way in helping to bang and build and sustain an online community. Now, in doing so, we have to be mindful about some of the, the basic needs and securities that we talked about earlier, recognizing that students might be accessing the course in a number of different ways, and um, students may have limited access to Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi with a high enough bandwidth. So again, flexibility is really important here. Um, so I would encourage students to do it, but maybe it's not something that you absolutely require. Um, it's also important for students to be able to engage outside of class and build community in that regard. Um, so getting students together and giving them opportunities to work on study, work in study groups, uh, online study groups, uh, group projects, virtual meetups to where everyone agrees to meet online, um, you know, th be it through Zoom or, or um, Google, Google Hangout or whatever it may be, whatever medium that you find helpful and comfortable. Um, and just being able to be online together for a period of time and even creating a class social media page or using hashtags and so forth for students to uh, be able to build an online community. Sharing perspectives also really helps to build and sustain community. So being able to share and exchange perspectives and it's really helpful if you can do this and keep this connected to topics that are related to the course, but also that have some relevance to the day to day lives and experiences of students. So think about some of the concepts and ideas that Luke just shared with regard to being culturally relevant and culturally affirming. It would be important to apply those same concepts in this regard. Um, we had a colleague who shared students can share their stories with other students, often creating a community of scholars and leaders seeking ways to better their communities and lives. And finally, using collaborative learning uh, as a strategy to build community. So um, you can do this in class, right? So for, for synchronous in class sessions, um, or also for longer term projects. So, um, you know, regardless of the approach that you take, it gives students an opportunity to, uh, that, that they tend to be beneficial for the learning and engagement of disproportionately impacted students. So if you're gonna do this, and if you're gonna use collaborative learning, it's important that you give students the tools that they need to collaborate effectively. So don't assume that they already know how to do this because they're working in teams, uh, in their workplaces or in other contexts and spaces in which they find themselves. Um, so it's important to create some guidelines for collaborative learning, uh, give students rubrics in order to be able to assess themselves um, on their collaborative learning and engagement. And most importantly, to have periodic check-ins with groups to increase, and all of these strategies will increase the likelihood that it will be a valuable learning experience and an opportunity for all students. Um, the last point with regard to collaborative learning is making sure that you're intentional about how you go about forming groups. Recognizing that self-selection is not always the best approach, first and foremost, because in an online environment, students may not know each other and they may not have had the opportunity to meet each other. And also thinking about some of the things that we shared earlier in this webinar, is that um, some students may have uh, social stereotypes about certain groups and certain types of students. 
So thinking about some ways in which you can get students to work collaboratively uh, without the, the typical, hey, um, find a classmate or find three or four classmates to collaborate and work together within a group setting. 